Hi, this is the first series in a series of videos on basic JavaScript. And um, the focus of this series of videos is going to be objects. And um, the project that we're going to make is an online quiz, right? So our quiz will look something like this when we're done. You know, it'll have a question at the top. And then there will be a list of potential answers, right? And you could pick an answer and then you can submit your question and then it'll tell you you know oops you got it wrong or if you choose the correct answer it'll shows you it'll it'll say yep that's correct right um, and you can answer any of them right and the um, the structure behind this is going to be an array of objects right so we'll have an array of questions that'll be a list of questions so I've got three questions here and then each question will be represented by an object, right? So the object will have um, a property that is the question text, right? It'll have an array property that will be a list of, of potential answers, right? And then it'll have another property to tell us which of the answers is correct, right? And from that, we can generate, um, you know, any number of, of quiz questions, right? Um, so let's get started. Uh, I'm going to uh, make a new folder on my desktop and I'll call it quiz and I'll drag it on top of Visual Studio Code here to open it in Visual Studio and then I'm going to make a brand new file called index.html. So we'll have to have an HTML page to display our quiz. So uh, let's just start there. And I know that um, there's a thing that does all this HTML stuff for you automatically. But for some reason, I find it um, comforting when I do it myself. Anyway, there, uh, I'll just type it all for myself there. And that doesn't take too long. So here's our basic HTML document. Let's save it. And uh, maybe I'll make a, a note here for scripts and I'll put all of my JavaScript down here okay so let's talk about objects just for a minute right so what is an object well an object is a structure in JavaScript and it's a complex value type right so it it can have multiple values stored in it and all of the values stored in an object are represented by a key or accessed through a key. And a key is basically just a name. In JavaScript, we call the keys properties, right? So when you make an object, you say your object has properties, right? So I'll make an object here. We define an object with the curly braces, right? Let's zoom in on that so we can really see it, right? So there's the curly braces there. And then you'll put your properties in between the curly braces. Now, remember when we made an array, we used the square brackets, right? So if I said, you know, array equals, you know, new array, I'd use the square brackets like this. And every value in the array is um, separated by a comma. And if we wanted to get at any of the values in this array, we would put the square brackets and give the index. So if I put a one here, this would be B, right? Because zero would be A and one would be B, right? And two would be C. Um, in an object though, if we had some values, we might say our question was, uh, what is an apple, right? And then our answer let me actually break this into a couple lines here. Um, if I wanted to put an answer in here, I'd put a comma, and then I'd put my answer, and then I'd say, you know, an apple is a red, round fruit. Okay? Um, so the let's compare and contrast these, right? Um, in the array, we use the square brackets, and we separate each value with a comma. In an object, we use the curly braces and we separate each property and value pair with a comma, right? So in an array here, we have a, a property name followed by a colon and then a value, 
right? And if we access the value in an array, we would say object dot, and then we'd say the property name. So if I say Q, I'm going to get the question. So, you know, it's going to say, what is an apple, right? And if I said, you know, object dot um, A for answer, then the computer would tell me it's a red round fruit okay so I would give it the property name and then it would give me a string so these property names can't have spaces in them they can't have they can't begin with a number they can't um, have any special characters in them so you can't say you know uh, question dash one right you can see it gives me kind of these red lines to say there's something wrong with my syntax right I could do question one like this I can't begin with a number okay it's kind of giving me the red line there saying there's something wrong right okay um, you can use a string for the for the key so if you uh, wrap this in the quotation marks you could do this you know uh, question two right generally that's not um, that's not uh, it's not really done like people you know people want to keep the property names with with something that's value that that, that that's um, you know valid everywhere right um, but uh, you can you can do that um, you, so you can use a string you can also access the the property with a string so for example if I had a, a constant and it was called uh, you know um, let's call it question key right and it was equal to Q because this was the key that we used to get the property from or the property name that we use to get the value from the question, then we could do this. We could say object square brackets and then say the question key, okay? So if this string matches the property name, then it will give us the value. And so this would be, you know, what is an apple again? right so um, so there we go that's kind of the basics of objects there's a little more but that's like you know how you're gonna use objects like 99% of the time uh, you know 99% of the time you're just gonna do this like these two situations you're gonna make an object with the curly braces you're gonna define properties you know uh, and then follow it with a colon and a value and then you're going to access those properties with the, the key, okay? Um, and the properties can be anything. So you could say um, correct is zero, right? You can say, you can even put a function in here. You can say um, check answer is a function. And you could put some code in here. You know, it could be anything. Maybe we'll just put a comment in there for now, right? Could be any kind of code right so you can actually put put functions in here okay so you can have store any value you can even put another object so I could put um, I don't know maybe uh, let's say what would be a good quiz you could say uh, quiz type is and then I could have another object here and I could give it some properties so I could say um, you know uh, answers is one and uh, correct is zero and um, uh, type is um, multiple you know something like that right and but notice every time I followed the rule right like I started with the curly brackets to surround the entire object I created a property name followed with the colon and a, then a value and then I put a comma before starting my next property colon value pair and then another comma right so there's a property colon value comma property colon the value here goes all the way oh wait I have a syntax error no wonder I got that red line let's fix it so I'll put the comma there oh now everything's good and then here I have another property colon and then the value is this object so if I had another one following this I'd put the comma here and then inside this object I need to have property colon value comma 
property colon value comma, property colon value, right? You can end with a comma on the last one if you want. Some people like that. That's kind of a style that people use when they code, um, but you don't have to have it on the last one, okay? So anyway, so there we go, right? Um, and also just as a note, you can have properties that are arrays. So for example, if like, you know, I have one answer here, maybe I like that, but what I'd like to do is I'd like to have an array of answers to create a multiple choice quiz. So why don't we do this? Why don't we say, you know, answers is an array, right? So I've got property colon value comma property colon value right and now i have my array and as long as i'm following the array syntax then everything's good so i could say you know answer number you know one comma answer number two and answer number three right oops i gotta put that in the quotes um, and then there we go. So now here we've got an object that has um, two properties and one of those properties is a string and the other one is an array of strings. Okay. So anyway, so that should get you started on objects. And what our goal is, is to make a structure that represents the quiz. So why don't we do that? Um, so first we need some, I'm going to delete all this for now, right? And what we'll need here to get this started is we'll need some questions, right? So what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna define a constant and I'll make it an array. So let's put, let's call this questions, right? And there we go, I got my square brackets. And what we'll need is we'll need some questions, right? I wanna keep them short. So the question should be like, you know, a short sentence, couple words, and then each of the answers should be the same. So you can make, you can go find a list of questions that you wanna use. Um, just for fun, I think I'm gonna use this, um, this list of beautiful words with no English translation, right? So these are pretty good. Uh, Waldine Samkite, right? The feeling of solitude and connectedness to nature when being alone in the woods, right? That's a pretty good, pretty good word, right? And then um, Wabi Sabi, the finding of beauty in imperfections, or finding beauty in imperfections, right? Um, so I'm going to grab a couple of these words here, and then the answers are pretty short. That one's a little long, but this is a pretty good one, right? And then I'll have to make up um, three or two or three answers that are incorrect, right? So I can just make those up myself, and then we'll put them in, um, in our, our data structure, right? So why don't we get started? I'm just going to copy this word here. And um, where's Visual Studio? There we are. And what we need is I've got an array here. And my first question in the array will look like this. It goes between the square brackets, right? I got questions equals array. And then what I'll do is I'll put the comma here. And then that would be my second question, right? So all the questions are going to follow the same structure. And, uh, you know, it'll, it'll get pretty long, so you got to keep track of where the curly brackets are and where the commas are, right? So I'm going to put a line return here, and then I'll put Q for my question, and I'll say, what is Walden, Waldine Samkite? I don't think I'm pronouncing that right. Maybe I'll put a question mark there, right? And then, uh, you know, if I want to put the, uh, the answers, right, so I'll say A... For answer, I'm just going to keep the uh, keys short because it'll be easier. I'll have an array of um, of answers, right? And then maybe I'll just make the first one the correct one here. We'll randomize these, right? So that the order doesn't matter, right? So I'll put this here: the feeling of connect of solitude and connectedness with nature. And then since this is an array, I'll need a comma at the end. And then I'll have another answer here, and I'll say a Walden Samkite. I don't know what that is. Um, uh, a wide belt worn uh, by cowboys, right? And then I'll do another one here. Um, a pastry. 
from the foothills of Appalachia. Wait, I can't spell that. So let me think of a better way. Uh, the foothills of, uh, let me think. Uh, I don't know. I got to think of something good. Let's, uh, the foothills of Minnesota. Minnesota. Soda, right? Um, anyway, um, I'm probably misspelled that too. Uh, anyway, so here's what I want you to do, right? Is I want you to work out some questions, right? Make a list of questions. So that's your challenge right now. Make a list of at least three questions. You can do more if you like. And actually, you know, I realize we got to do one more thing here. Um, I'm going to put a comma here. And now we need to mark which of the answers here in this array is correct. And now I know the first one is correct. So what we'll do is we'll say correct is index 0. Okay, so let's review this, right? We've got um, uh, question, colon, uh, value, comma, and then answer, colon, and then the value goes to here, and I have a comma, and then I have a property colon and a, a value right and then we're done and then this one is the this curly brace matches the one up here and we've got the entire object right and then within these um, square brackets here I have to make sure that I have you know a quotation mark for the string and then a comma at the end of each of these lines right okay so that's your goal thanks for watching uh, make a list of potential questions and kind of follow the structure that we have here. We'll have Q for the question, A for the answer, and then we'll mark correct with the index of the correct answer. Okay? So anyway, thanks for watching. Um, you do that, and then in the next video, we'll, we'll continue and we'll start making our quiz.